patriarchy, I can twerk if I want to. F the patriarchy, am I right, ladies? Teenage girls, any teenage girls watching, you do not need to be sexy. If you are under 18, put it away. Hey y'all, so I asked you guys what video you wanted to see and a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about the over of teen girls and talk about kind of how Billie Eilish fits into this idea that young girls are sexualized in the media and stuff like that. So I have a lot I need to say, so I'm just gonna dive right into it. So it's no secret that young girls and specifically teenagers are sexualized a lot, especially in the media. The first thing that comes to mind is the schoolgirl trope that is still a very popular fetish that a lot of people don't realize is deeply rooted in orthopedos you know what i mean like orthopedics what the f did you just say to me orthopedophiles you know what i mean like it's it's do you get what did it she say? p words orthopedo uh, doctors we say that now i mean the schoolgirl trope is something that we have seen forever i mean you see it in anime you see it in music videos and photo shoots it's everywhere. People still go as sexy schoolgirls for Halloween, so clearly there's something about young girls that is very appealing and for some reason sexual. Even I am guilty of doing this. I've definitely put on a plaid skirt to make myself feel cute and sexy when in reality there should be nothing sexy about a teenage girl's school uniform. Young girls are being sexualized all the time. It's happened for pretty much centuries. I mean, 13 year olds were out here getting married back in the ye old days, so. It's honestly something that has always been an issue for some reason. Obviously, youth is kind of like the pinnacle of female beauty. The younger you look, the better. And sadly, young girls are being sexualized just for being young. Oh, real quick, I just had to give a dishonorable mention to the monstrosity of a television show that is Toddlers and Tiaras. Because, my God, how the hell was this show legal, man? Like, the fact that there are grown ass women doing this to their kids really just makes me want to throw up. And what really makes me want to throw up is the fact that somebody really dressed their whole child up as Julia Roberts from pretty woman aka a prostitute i you know there's a lot to unpack there but i i that is a whole video in and of itself i've heard a lot of girls say that they were catcalled more when they were in their early teens than when they were actual adults and i think that kind of explains this whole video young girls are overly sexualized and it doesn't just happen in the media it happens in real life I think a great example of how badly young girls are sexualized in the media is Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish is well known for wearing super oversized baggy clothes that resemble a 90s rapper and she did that for a reason. It's because she didn't want people to sexualize her or judge her body or objectify her as a minor. I never want the world to know everything about me. I mean that's why I wear big baggy clothes. Nobody can have an opinion because they haven't seen what's underneath, you know? Nobody can be like, oh, she's she's slim thick. She's not slim thick. She's <laughs> she got a flat ass. She's got a fat ass. No one can say any of that because they don't know. And it's really sad that she had to resort to such extreme measures to protect herself against being judged or being objectified as a teenager. I mean, I remember like early, early back in her career, like before she really blew up, I was following her on Instagram and she posted a picture of her in a turtleneck and it was very form fitting. And half of the comments were about the size of her boobs. And ever since that picture, I'd never seen her wear anything after that, except, you know, the Vogue cover, which we'll get into. But it's very sad that a girl can't even wear a turtleneck without being ostracized for it and you see this a lot in school dress code i mean i've had my fair share of bad experiences with my school dress code in middle school especially it's weird because i never had a problem with it in high school where i was more developed but in middle school i was dress coded all the time for wearing things that were too tight or too short and i remember always being confused because i wasn't wearing anything different than the other girls were wearing but i think because i was developing and some girls had boobs and some didn't and i was one of the girls who had boobs and a butt it was i guess jarring or deemed as inappropriate when in reality 
I was just wearing shorts because it was hot outside, not because I'm trying to be a little slut, but thanks, principal. But whatever. Back to Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish did everything in her power to not be sexualized. And the thing is, people still sexualized her. Before she turned 18, there was like a countdown and people just preying on her, ready to pounce when she turned 18. But flash forward to a few days ago, Billie Eilish presents herself in a completely new way. She is feminine, she is embracing our curves, she is really showing off her body in a way that we have never seen before. In this way, she's taking control of her body, she's reclaiming that power because, you know, now that she's an adult legally, she probably feels more free and open to express herself in this way. And the shoot wasn't even sexual, it was more so like, sensual or whatever, but it, I don't think it was very sexual and that definitely wasn't the point. As a woman, I understand completely what she was doing there because I remember when I was a teenager in high school and, you know, still getting used to my body and, you know, it's very odd when people sexualize you and see you only for your body when you're 16 years old. I remember when I was a freshman in high school, I wore leggings to school and I was in the cafeteria line and this senior turns to me and goes, Oh, I've seen you. You're the girl with the fat ass. Yeah, I see you walking up the stairs and That was a very weird experience. That was like the first time a man has ever said something to me sexual that was unwanted or just sexual in general. And I was 14 at the time, so it makes sense. And so, you know, a lot of young girls go through things like that. I think we all have a story about some dude being creepy to us when we are barely even preteens. But I'm really proud of Billie Eilish for doing this because I feel like, you know, she's really expressing herself and freeing herself because it seems like those clothes were almost like, like a prison for her body. It was more than just protection. It was a shield, but it also may have been holding her back. Or maybe she was completely fine and comfortable with wearing baggy clothes and that's really just what she loved. But I know that she was wearing those clothes for a reason and I always wondered, you know, how would she dress if she wasn't worried about people looking at her body? Before we move on, I just wanted to give an honorable mention to Miss Britney Spears because boy did that woman walk so Billie Eilish could run. Seriously, she probably got some of the worst treatment by men in Hollywood when she was a teenager. If you've seen the Britney Spears documentary, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, but they would just always ask her ridiculous questions about her body and her virginity, which were obviously completely inappropriate, and I don't think Billie Eilish would have the opportunities that she has now and the protection that she has now if it weren't for women like Britney Spears who really went through the worst of it. I think Billie Eilish is a great example of reclaiming your power and owning your body and expressing yourself comfortably because, like I said, she wasn't overly sexualizing herself, she was just expressing herself and showing us something different and it was her decision and it was on her terms. I think a huge issue with young pop stars specifically, you know, breaking out of their child star shell and becoming adult women is that they're forced to be sexual. They're forced into an overly sexual image that wasn't their idea in the first place. Okay, so I don't know if y'all remember this era of Ariana Grande's career where she was like trying to be sexy and sh but it just looked hella awkward and just forced and it was really strange. Like she was serving girl next door, but also like trying to like talk about getting bang, bang, da, 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 and sh like that. And it was just like very wrong. <laughs> I hope this wasn't her idea. I don't think it was. I really don't think it was, and whoever thought this was a guy, a good idea, I hope they were fired, because this was just a mess. She's great now, she's grown, she's sexy, she's married, um, but this arrow, I don't know, didn't sit right with me. I know that Aryanators are about to come for me for this one, but like, I can't be the only one who's thinking this. You smell like a baby prostitute. Yeah. But Billy, on the other hand, made the decision to show off her body in a way that was comfortable to her and made her feel attractive and beautiful and not like a piece of meat. I think young girls should look at Billie Eilish and learn from her and take notes on how she chooses to express herself in a way that is comfortable to her but not feeding into this like weird male gaze that we're taught to 
partake in even though like we don't really know what we're doing and we don't even know if that's something we feel comfortable with. The reason why I'm making this video is to really just say teenage girls, any teenage girls watching, you do not need to be sexy. You don't need to have sex appeal. You don't need to be sexual. You are legally a child and you should stay that way as long as you possibly can. I see so many young girls trying to grow up so fast and, you know, become women by the time they're 15 when they really don't have to. There are plenty of examples that I will give later in this video, but it seems like nowadays teenagers are growing up faster and faster, especially women, because of social media. It all comes back to social media, doesn't it? I know girls of all generations have daydreamed about becoming full-grown women, but now that we have the internet, it's a lot easier to access things that will help us look more mature, like doing our makeup and doing our hair and how to dress for our bodies. I assure you that there are plenty of 13-year-old girls out there looking at Kylie Jenner and thinking, oh, I need to look like that. I want to look like that. And it's not a bad thing to want to look like beautiful adult women, but once you act on that desire and you actively try to change your underdeveloped appearance to match these older women, that's when it becomes a problem. And I think that's why so many girls have such low self-esteem nowadays with their appearance because they're comparing themselves to grown adult women who may or might not have some surgery. And they wonder, well, why don't I look like that? And it's for a plethora of reasons, but today the reason is because you're 13 years old, not 31. I think another thing that contributes to teens wanting to grow up so fast nowadays is shows like Euphoria and Skins because it portrays teenagehood in this very unrealistic way. Like, I don't know about y'all, but when I was in high school, I was not popping pills and going to the club and, you know, having orgies or whatever it is that they do in Euphoria or Skins. Like, I love Euphoria and skins ruined me but i still loved that show but it doesn't really portray the monotony of teenage life that the average teenager is going through and i think a lot of young kids may be watching these shows and they want to partake in these activities because they think that's what they should be doing also the character cat very much feeds into the whole point that I'm trying to make in this video about young girls doing sex work and sexualizing themselves and thinking that sexualizing themselves means that they're reclaiming their power and their bodies when in reality they're just children playing dress up in BDSM collars and harnesses and it's just really weird. What worries me the most is that a lot of these girls believe that them showing off their bodies and them claiming to be body positive by posting their bikini pics or their thirst traps is they think that it's some sort of female liberation that this is them owning their sexuality and being a free-spirited woman but you don't have a sexuality you're a child you don't have to be in touch with your sexuality you don't even have to be in touch with your body shit when i was 15 i don't know what the hell is going on at that age you feel the most attached from your body because it's changing every single day you can't attach yourself to anything and that's totally fine you don't have to own your body you don't have to you know be showing off every little itty bitty piece of it because it's it's just let that be for you you know at least until you turn 18 you're allowed to be comfortable in your body and, and feel positively towards your body but I think a lot of people use body positivity as a way to show off their thirst traps but making it out like woke and feminist and shit so they don't feel bad um, I'm completely guilty of this I'm I, I have done this before. If this applies to you and you feel attacked, I'm really just attacking myself. So we're on this together. It's, it seems like these all-encompassing buzzwords like sexual liberation and female empowerment get gravely misunderstood and they just turn into their own thing that is completely different from what it first started out as, you know? I remember when WAP came out and everyone was like, is this sexual liberation? Is this really what feminism has come to? And personally, I don't think it's feminism and it really doesn't have to be. Just because a woman is shaking her ass, it doesn't mean that it has to be like some grand statement about feminism. She can just shake her ass because she wants to. We're trying to make these things seem like it's a, a feminist cause and girls think that them shaking their ass on TikTok makes them a feminist. I know that's kind of like 
generalizing it, but that's what I see personally. I remember I followed this girl on TikTok and you know, I, I liked her outfits and stuff, so I liked to look through her page sometimes. And I noticed that she had a lot of kind of like thirst trap y TikToks, you know, the ones that I'm talking about. And you know, they were pretty sexual. Like these weren't even sensual, these were full on sexual. And then I looked at her bio and it said that she was 16, and I had to hit that unfollow button real quick because. Even though I'm not doing anything weird with this content, I just felt like I was watching something I shouldn't. And if I, as a young woman, watching it feels uncomfortable, I can't imagine what grown men are thinking looking at this shit. And that alone just makes me sick and made me want nothing to do with her page because I just knew how other people were perceiving it. And I think she knows too. I mean, I think we should protect young girls, but I also think we should allow young girls to make their own decisions and understand the consequences of their actions because they're not stupid they're not dumb they know what they're doing by posting thirst traps like that's like it's called a thirst trap but what they don't understand is the long-term consequences and they can't see it from a bird's eye view they can make a video that's sexy and be like oh this is sexy i'm gonna post it because why not but they don't understand that there are creeps out there that are actually like looking at these videos and probably saving them, sending these to people. And they may consciously know that because people will comment gross things, but I don't think they understand how this can genuinely affect them in the future. And even if they know that, oh yeah, maybe some guy is looking at this and thinking wild thoughts, but it's so easy to ignore because it's online and you can't see every person who watches your video and how they react to it. It really scares me seeing so many young girls on TikTok and Instagram, whatever app, but specifically TikTok, doing these really sexual dances and thirst traps and saying that, oh, well, I'm allowed to show off my body because I'm empowered and liberated. And if men look at this and do gross things with it, then it's their fault and they're up and yeah they are f***ed up for doing that but men don't care if you say f the patriarchy while you're twerking on tiktok they're still gonna jerk off to your pictures and your videos like fuck the patriarchy i can twerk if i want to f the patriarchy am i right lady you don't understand it shouldn't be this way but this is just how the world is and this same girl made of tiktok defending herself against creepy older guys who were commenting weird stuff on her page and saying, you know, I'm underage and you shouldn't be saying this stuff, you're gross. And as much as I agree, what do you expect? And I'm not like victim blaming or being like, oh, she asked for it, but there's something really wrong about a 16 year old girl shaking her ass all up and down TikTok wearing a skirt that barely covers her coochie and her titties are all out. Like, it's just, it's just a lot and it just, it feels wrong. Some of these little dances that these girls on TikTok do do not sit right with me. And most of these girls are underage who are doing these dances. Also, why is it that when I search Charlie D'Amelio, the word twerking comes up before TikTok? Sus. And I'm a woman saying this, so I don't think I'm completely off in saying this. Yeah, it would be great if older men weren't creepy and gross, but they are. That's the world that we live in. It's not changing anytime soon. And maybe just save the ass shaking and the tiny schoolgirl girts for when you're 18. You can wear it in real life, I guess. I don't care, but the internet is a completely different place and when you're constantly posting sexual content that's borderline graphic, it's gonna catch people's attention. And some of those people you may not want on your page, especially if you're under age, which is the point I'm really just trying to get across. I don't care if you shake your ass on TikTok. I don't care if you do OnlyFans, shit, get your bag, sis. But if you are under 18, put it away because people are creepy and they are crazy people are crazy and you cannot protect yourself on the internet like you think you can i don't even want to say oh i wish 16 year old girls could sexualize themselves in peace and you know nobody would say a thing but i don't feel that way childhood is a great experience and i know a lot of kids want to grow up fast i knew i wanted to grow up when i was younger but just stay a kid like sex is such a complicated 
part of life sometimes that it's better to just stay away from it as long as you can and once you're ready and you're old enough to partake in those things then go off have a good time i'm not here to say you know you shouldn't do this at this age like we all have different maturity levels and rates of development but i just wish that young girls weren't being tricked into sexualizing themselves online under the guise of feminism because it it is them being tricked you know i've heard people say men want women to think that being sexually promiscuous is liberating because it works out in their favor and i think that applies to this because as long as young underage girls think that them exposing themselves physically online is empowering creepy people are just getting more and more content more and more child corn and it's sick and it's sad because i think a lot of girls feel like they have to show off their bodies to get attention and to be perceived as beautiful and on the flip side there are plenty of girls like Billie eilish who don't want to show off their body at all because they're so afraid of being sexualized another thing that really disturbs me is the normalization of sugar babies and sex work in general a lot of young naive girls are online and seeing other girls say that they have sugar daddies and they just go out to dinner with them and they pay them ten thousand dollars per minute and it's great and they don't have sex with them girl that's a lie they're having sex like you think you can just no maybe on the rare occasion there are sugar babies out there who don't engage in intercourse with their sugar daddies but the thing is it's very rare and extremely unrealistic for that to happen and a lot of girls think oh yeah i can just find a, a nice old bill gates looking ass dude on seeking arrangements and i'm set for life and i don't have to do anything other than sit there and look pretty that's not how it works and a lot of young girls are putting themselves in very dangerous situations thinking that they're getting one thing when in reality they could be getting something completely different. And yes, there are underage girls who are doing this. Like, girls lie about their age all the time. It's not a secret and some guys seek out young girls, especially if they look young, which they do because they're 16, they're not gonna look 25. So I was a sugar baby. Um, I started a couple weeks after I turned 18 and I stopped a couple weeks before I turned 21. Uh, and most of that time I was with the same man. The first one that I met, I met him on a website called Seeking Arrangements. When I met him for the first time, he showed up with like $500 worth of gifts for me. He gave me $200 in cash. And then after that, we met up about once a week for like a year and when we met up we would go to dinner go to lunch um like go see a movie um and he would buy me stuff like every time we went out um but in addition to buying me stuff every time we met up he would give me two hundred dollars that was like my allowance unofficially so i'd say he probably gave me like a couple thousand dollars over like the course of the years we were talking we did like the dirty stuff too um, oh, I should also mention, he was 51 when we met, and I was 18, so we had like a 32 year age difference. Um, after knowing each other for like a year and a half, I moved, and it just so happened where I was going is where he lived, and I was moving away from my parents and into an apartment in college, um, and so I basically spent most of my time living with him at that point, so we spent like every day together all day and we would spend the whole weekend together we would like go on trips so that was like the good part of the relationship um but the bad part is that like once we started living together is when things got bad when we would be together if i so much as like looked at my phone while i was with him he would be like i'm i'm spending all this money for you to spend time with me and like you're gonna go talk to someone else that you can go see any other time he would also guilt me really bad into um giving him head every time i saw him he'd be like i'm giving i'm doing all this for you like it's the least you could do and i hated it every single time i'm a lesbian now he would like talk down to me all the time he would tell me like that I, there was no way i could understand the things he was talking about because i was too young even though like 
he would tell me all the time that I was like so mature and that like he liked that I was young and mature but then like when it didn't work out for him he would like make me feel awful about it he really just made fun of me like all the time he used to get really angry sometimes if his tv wasn't turning on he would get so mad he would like punch walls and scream be like god damn it this f***ing tv and anytime I would ask him to like not yell or like not be so mad he would start yelling at me and be like i'm not yelling at you stop being such a f***ing baby so he would buy me things to make up for it it worked <laughs> it worked for like a year the power dynamic was so unhealthy because he could do whatever he wanted to me and he knew that that i was gonna stay because he was giving me money and i wasn't going anywhere because i needed it um i also like loved him I guess you could say I, I did. I did love him for a while before things were like really bad. I did. So it was a really like abusive and bad situation. Things were getting serious between us and he wanted to like meet my family. I met his family. He has two sons that are older than I am and he would want to meet my family and he's older than both of my parents. So I would tell him like, you can't meet my parents and he would get so angry with me he'd be like i do all this for you and like we're so serious and i can't even meet your family then like it's not even like real and i was like you're right it's not real you're my fucking sugar daddy he really blurred the lines of sugar daddy and boyfriend and that's when like it got bad i was at the time 19 in a relationship with someone who was at the time 52. i also exclusively referred to him as daddy per his request i never called him his name literally our entire multiple year relationship i don't think i ever referred to him by his name anytime i complained to him about anything he would flip it back to me make it my fault somehow and say well i'm the one giving you all this money so like i'm allowed to do whatever i want basically is what he would say Okay, so like I will say, all my negative experiences aside, um, I don't regret starting sugaring and I'm probably going to continue once I'm healed from like my drama from this relationship. Um, and there's a way to do it safely and there's a way to do it responsibly and I don't think it's a bad thing to do at all. Um, but so that being said, let me give you some tips from a self-proclaimed professional sugar baby because um, after I stopped seeing him, I did see a couple other guys like more casually. Like use common sense when it comes to finding a person. Um, I suggest using sites specifically for sugaring because like anyone could message you on Instagram and be like, oh my god, you're so sexy. Do you want to be my sugar baby? The biggest thing I can say when it comes to getting money from them is if they are specific, like weirdly specific and demanding about how they send you money, it's an immediate huge red flag um like if they're like oh i'll send you money but it's gonna be through this website that you've never heard of don't do it like if they ask you to do so many things that like seem weird don't do it never take checks um unless you like know the person really well and you trust them cash is like the ideal method in my opinion um just because it's the least traceable and like you would get in the least trouble if something is bad like with the person and like never do direct deposit or like bank transfer like never give them your bank information I, you would think that's self-explanatory but i've had so many people in the past ask me if they should give this person they're talking to their bank information so like don't do that don't do what i did don't live with them like don't start a relationship with them keep things very professional give someone your location when you meet them for the first time give multiple people your location for the first time when you meet someone and let the guy know that multiple people have your location when you first meet the person so that he knows that if he messes up they people know where you are set clear boundaries and let the guy know what your boundaries are and if he tries to push them and it's a no like it's not worth being disrespected and taken advantage of for the money there are sugar daddies out there that will respect your boundaries and that will do all the things you want them to do and still give you money it's harder to find but it's out there sex work in general has become very normalized in some ways it's good but in some ways it's bad like it should be normalized it should be legalized so those sex workers have protection but a lot of young girls are seeing sex work as a viable option as a career path and they're not understanding what it is that they're getting into exactly and how that can affect them in the long term. They just think, oh, I really need money. I can just start OnlyFans once I turn 18. A lot of these girls don't realize like eventually they're gonna age out of OnlyFans or they might change their minds and can't escape their past on OnlyFans. I think even Trisha Paytas said, you know, 
Wait to do OnlyFans until you're like at least 25. If you're freshly 18, don't do it. Just relax, give it time because you might change your mind. It's not just like starting a YouTube channel, you know? Like that's something that does have consequences and you have to be ready to deal with that. The whole bad baby thing really just made me sick to my stomach. Sis really said, okay, it's 12.01, I'm 18, time to show my titties. And she made like what, like millions off of her first day? Cause all these creeps were trying to get a piece of bad baby, the girl who just turned 18. Like it's so sick, but that in itself proves how sexualized young girls are. And so many young girls are looking at bad baby and be like, oh my God, she made so much money. Like I can do that. And just, you just don't, please don't. No disrespect to anybody who does OnlyFans. I'm just saying, you know, people really need to think before they do it. Anyways, I hope this video was what y'all we're looking for this is something i actually really wanted to talk about for a while so i'm glad y'all recommended that i do this video and i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one and have a good night day evening wherever you are whatever time it is okay goodbye <laughs>